from Schrodinger's equation to quantum conspiracy. My name is Anne Yu. I am the narrator for these slides by Professor Francis T.S.U. Here is Professor's presentation in his own words. It is a pleasure for me to give this presentation about this revolutionary topic. Before I get started, I would like to make a couple remarks. First, a scientist's dilemma. Should he bury himself within the timeless science and thrive, or should he change to temporal science in light? Second, as a learner, we, we gradually lose independent logical thinking and opt to accept the approval of others. This slide shows the derivation of Schrodinger's equation as from Hamiltonian classical mechanics, from which we see that a particle in motion is situated on an empty space of a piece of paper as shown in the diagram. Total energy of a Hamiltonian particle in motion is equal to its kinetic energy plus the particle's potential energy as shown by this equation. H is equal to P squared over 2M plus V, which is the well-known Hamiltonian operator where P and M represent the particle's momentum and mass respectively and V is the particle's potential energy. Nevertheless, it is a non-physically realizable paradigm since substance and emptiness cannot coexist. In view of preceding Hamiltonian operator, the Hamiltonian equation can be shown as given in this slide. H is equal to the negative of h squared over 8 pi squared times m times del squared plus v, where h is Planck's constant and v and m are the mass and potential energy of the particle and del squared is a Laplacian operator. By virtue of energy conservation, Hamiltonian equation can be written as shown in the slide. H phi is equal to the negative of H squared over 8 pi squared times M times del squared plus V all times phi which is equal to E times phi where phi is the Hamiltonian wave function that remains to be determined. E is an energy factor which is to be assumed and V represents a potential energy that needs to be incorporated. This slide shows how Schrodinger's equation was developed. Since Schrodinger's quantum mechanics is the legacy of Hamiltonian, by adopting Bohr's quantum jump state energy, E is equal to HV from Bohr's atomic model. This shows on the left-hand side of the slide for which Schrodinger's equation is given by the right-hand side equation. This slide shows where the non-physically realizable quantum leap comes from. It comes from Bohr's atomic model which was presented within an empty space as shown by the figure on the left hand side in which we see that there is a Bohr's atomic model which is embedded with an empty timeless space. But my question is, one, how can quantum leap radiate since Bohr's atomic at atom is embedded within an empty space? Two, yet in reality, Bohr's at atom is embedded within a temporal space. Then quantum leap radiation has to be temporal, 
t is greater than zero, which must be a time and band limited wave function and exists only in the positive time domain. In other words, t is greater than zero. In view of Schrodinger's equation shown in this slide, we see that it is a point singularity deterministic time independent equation. That means it is timeless or has no time. This is virtually identical to the Hamiltonian equation, except the energy factor is E is equal to HV quantum state energy of Bohr. The reason why this is a time independent equation, firstly Schrodinger's equation is the legacy of the Hamiltonian, which is a timeless classical mechanics. That is, it is time independent. But Hamiltonian was derived on an empty space platform, as has been shown in the previous slide. Since Schrodinger's equation is a legacy of the Hamiltonian, Schrodinger's equation is a timeless equation. In other words, t is equal to zero, as based on the empty space platform. Nevertheless, major differences between Schrodinger's mechanics and the Hamiltonian must be the namesake of the quantum, which comes from Bohr's atomic quantum leap, E is equal to h nu, or a quanta of light that Schrodinger used for the development of his quantum mechanics. This is precisely Schrodinger's wave equation, which is very similar to the Hamiltonian as shown in this slide. Phi times t is equal to phi zero times the exponential of minus two pi nu times t minus t zero over h. This is the Schrodinger wave equation, where phi zero is an arbitrary constant, nu is the frequency of the quantum leap, and h nu and h is Planck's constant. But this is a physically realizable, this is a non-physically realizable equation since it is not a time and band limited equation. And it is also not temporal, t is greater than zero. That is, it exists only within the positive time domain. Since all the quantum, multi-quantum leaps are not time limited, it is trivial to see that all their quantum leaps will be instantaneous. These quantum leaps are not simultaneously superimposing at all times, and they are not simultaneous events within our temporal universe. However, it is possible to reconfigure a non-realizable wave function to be temporal, which is t is greater than zero, as shown in this slide. Phi of t is equal to phi zero times the exponential of minus go zero times t minus t zero squared times the cosine of two pi nu t comma t is greater than zero, in which we see that it is a time limited Gaussian wavelet that exits in the positive time domain, as shown in this slide, which can be implemented within our temporal universe. T is greater than zero. This slide shows Schrodinger's fundamental principle of superposition as stated. Every quantum state can be represented as a sum of two or more other distinct states. Mathematically, it refers to a property of solutions to the Stro Schrodinger's equation. Since the Schrodinger equation is linear, 
yet timeless t is equal to zero, any linear combination of solutions will also be a solution. In short, Schrodinger's superposition principle is that multi-quantum leaps are simultaneously and instantaneously superimposing in space and in time. This slide shows what timeless t equals to zero space can do to particles. Although timeless t equals zero space is not a physically realizable paradigm, since emptiness and substance cannot coexist, that is temporal exclusive principle, but quantum physicists can, can implant particles into an empty space since quantum scientists are also mathematicians. This slide shows what empty space can do to particles, for which we show two isolated particles are embedded within an empty space as shown on the left side diagram. Firstly, we see that it is not a physically realizable model, since particles cannot exist within an empty space. Secondly, since empty space has no time, we see that particles are collapsing at t equals zero, as can be seen on the left-hand side diagram. Since empty space has no distance, we see that particle one and two are superimposing together over the entire empty space as shown on the right-hand diagram from which we see that this is precisely the fundamental principle of superposition that Schrodinger stated, from which we see that Schrodinger's superposition principle only existed within a timeless space, which is t is equal to zero, and an empty space, which cannot exist within our universe. Nevertheless, empty space has no time and no distance, and no space from which we see that empty space is a virtual mathematical space. It is not a physically realizable space, and it cannot be an inaccessible space within our temporal t is greater than zero universe. This slide shows what temporal universe does for time-limited quantum state wavelets. For example, we have two temporal quantum state wavelets as shown in this slide, wavelet one and wavelet two as given by the respective equation as shown in this slide. Since there are time-limited temporal wavelets which can be implemented within the temporal universe, t is greater than zero, from which we see that these wavelets are not superimposing within our temporal universe, t is greater than zero, as in contrast with the fundamental principle of superposition, which has been predicted, from which we have proven that Schrodinger's superposition principle is not existing within our universe. This slide shows what empty space can do to quantum wavelets. Again, we have two time-limited quantum wavelets as shown on the left-hand side of this slide. If these two wavelets are plunging within an empty space as illustrated on the right-hand side diagram, firstly, we, see, we will see that these two wavelets are superimposing together and collapsing at the same time, t is equal to zero, as can be seen on the right-hand side diagram. Since it is a timeless t is equal to zero space, it has no time and no space, for which we see that superposition exists only within an empty space, and it does not exist within our temporal universe. This slide shows what happens to particles existing within our universe. For example, we assume particle one and two are plunged 
within a temporal space as shown in the figure. We see that there are precisely located at their specific locations within a temporal t is greater than zero space, since the temporal space has time and distance. One condition I stress, particles in motion or static are a temporal particle that change naturally with time, in which we see that Schrodinger's superposition principle fails to exist within our temporal t is greater than zero universe. It is interesting to see what happens if these particles are plunged within an empty space. Although it is not a physically realizable hypothesis as depicted on the right hand side, from which we see that particles lose their position identities by superimposing at time t is equal to zero. Once again, I have proven that superposition principle exists only within a medical virtual timeless space that is at t is equal to zero, but not within our universe. This slide shows two time-limited multi-quantum wavelets existing within a temporal space of t is greater than zero, from which we see that superposition fails to exist within our temporal universe of t is greater than zero. Since within temporal universe, it has time and space. Let me stress that within our universe, everything has a price to pay, a section of time delta t and an amount of energy delta e or space. But it is the section of delta t that we cannot squeeze to zero. In other words, t delta t equals zero, but it can approach zero. In other words, delta t can approach zero. This is causality or temporal constraint of our universe. T is greater than zero. This slide shows our universe started from Big Bang creation, changing naturally with time. It shows the age of our universe is about 14 billion light years old. It shows past time domain t is less than zero, is the certainty virtual image, which has no physical substance and time. Future time domain t is greater than zero represents a physically realizable uncertain universe, which will have both time and substances. While the present t is equal to zero represents an instant moment of absolute physical reality of our universe, which has both time and substance, in which we see that past universe had to have change with time. Thus, we see that time can be treated as an independent variable. Future universe will change with time. This means time is a dependent variable. Present universe, t is equal to zero, is an absolute moment of physical reality. Therefore, it is a mistake to treat our temporal universe, t is greater than zero, as a four-dimensional space-time cont continuum, as most scientists do, because time and universe coexist. My conclusion is, since quantum supremacy depends on Schrodinger's fundamental principle of superposition, as I see it, the timeless principle has emerged as a worldwide conspiracy. It is a quantum conspiracy. Thank you very much for listening to my lecture on quantum conspiracy.